In this video, I'm going to show you how to create some more depth in your alcohol ink painting, so stay tuned. Hi guys, so today I wanted to show you a lesson in layering and getting some depth in your alcohol ink work. We're going to be working on this 12 by 12 opaque white craft plastic from Graphics and I believe it's one of my favorite substrates of all time. The first thing I'm going to do is start with the Pitch Black by Ranger and I love this ink. If I had to give up all the other inks and just choose one, that would be the one. I also like the Slate by Ranger, it has a lot of effects, but that pitch black is really, really cool. Now, this is one of the signature techniques that I have for my work, and you can see how much depth it creates. If you want more information on how to create depth in your work, that looks like this, I have inspired art classes. I have a whole class on this series. It's a study in Slate and Valencia alcohol ink and you can sign up. There's a link in the description box to the classes if you're interested. Today I'm just going to go over some of the basics um, of creating, you know, a, a layering basically in your alcohol ink work. And one of the beautiful parts about alcohol ink is that you can continue to add and change uh, long after you think it's done. So if there's something you don't like, you can always go back and add more alcohol, you can add more ink, and it really is, That's this is why it's a fluid art, it's considered a fluid art. So the Pinata Blanco Blanco, I just put in that little bottle, it has a really, transparent quality to it and I love that because it brings out some of the natural orange color in that pitch black. So that pitch black has a bunch of colors in it. Um, uh, I, you know you can get blues, purples even, but see how the orange kind of comes out when you use that pinata blanco blanco. So this one just has alcohol ink I'm sorry, just not, uh, isopropyl alcohol, just 99%. And that's what I'm using for this painting. Those needle nose bottles really help with application. And I'm just smoothing out some of the areas that I think are a little rough on this piece. Just adding some interest, but see how the alcohol changes things? Now, Valencia is a beautiful color. It's basically um, an orange and this is a butterscotch. These are both by the Tim Holtz Ranger and you can see how I'm using that to to just add a splash of color in here. Love the graphics for its ability to wipe off and start over. So if there's something you really don't like, or if the ink is just starting to go in the direction that you're not excited about, you can just wipe it off. <laughs> even It even helps uh, shape, you know, there's sometimes you just want to shape something a little bit more. Um, you can just use a fresh paper towel and some of that isopropyl alcohol and it will wipe off for the most part. Now, if you use pearls, I've noticed it is harder to get the stain out of any paper, not just graphics, but if you're using um, any kind of paper, it definitely is harder to get off. But I just wanted this flower to have a, um, you know, a lot of depth to it, and that's one of the reasons why I'm adding the butterscotch there, using more colors on top of each other. Of course, they need to work together. If you're adding red and green right on top of each other, you're probably gonna get brown. So you know, you, you know, you do have to know a little bit of color theory, but adding the Blanco Blanco, see how that's just creating some depth there in those pieces and that's one of the ways to create depth, is just to, to keep adding more layers of color. Now you get to a point where it's too much on the paper, and then you start to lose something, but you'll be able to know when that is. So it took me a long time. This flower was about 45 minutes, 
So it doesn't always happen quickly, but I do like the way it ended up turning out. And then this one came a lot easier. I was thinking more, this one was more like a little bud or something compared to that big flower. And look at the blues that are coming out of that pitch black. Like I said, that pitch black has a lot of colors uh, inside of it. So it's a fun one to work through. Now, I, one thing I love about this piece, I called it fire spinner and the reason is, well, you can see the reason, but it just has a, kind of a circular motion to it. Um, now this is the slate, the pinata brass, and I put them in a bottle together. See how I'm just layering that over the top? Now it looks kind of messy right now, but I promise you, when you get finished and you can add all your little embellishments and bring out the little parts that you want to bring out, this is the way to add some depth to your work. I decided since we had one big flower and one kind of medium flower, one little bud, now we could make some different shapes and some different sizes of flowers. In general, our eyes really like threes, so three is a good number. Now I'm just reinforcing that vine back there. Now, see how I'm just layering on top of each flower, and now I'm adding you know, some of those spiky I don't even know what you would call them, but now that pitch black, that color is also coming out of the pitch black, if you can believe it. And I literally think I added just a little bit of the butterscotch in there. And then on top of that pitch black, it just made its own little color. So I'm just layering and layering and doing the same thing. And then at the very end, when I was done, I thought, all right, now it's time to do some embellishment. I love to embellish with the Arteza gel pens. They work great on the graphics plastic and honestly I, I, I use them on my paintings. I use, you've seen them in all kinds of work for me. But they're just really fun <laughs> to use and I, I use them in a lot of my work. So again if you want a more in-depth tutorial um, I go over all of these processes in depth in my inspired art classes and you can sign up in my description box. There is a link for you if you're interested. So let's take a look at this final piece. Ta-da! Isn't it pretty? And now you see why I call it Fire Spinner. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. And please be well. Can't wait to make more art videos just for you. Bye, guys.